The September 17, 2014 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Andrews? Mr. Barra? Dr. Carbone? Mr. Daniele? Aye. Mrs. Draw? Mr. Haney? Ms. Cayley? Dr. Quattro? Mr. Rocco? Mr. Tucciarello? Chairman Yolovich. Here. Would legislator draw please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Are there any speakers signed up for the public forum? There's not. Is there anyone here that would like to speak before this committee? Hearing none, the next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. You have the minutes from the August 20th, 2014 meeting in your folder. They will stand approved unless there are any changes made by the end of the day. Madam Clerk, new business, please. Referral 14-0267. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Tucciarello. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0268. Moved by Legislator Tucciarello, seconded by Legislator Quattro. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0269. Moved by Legislator Quattro, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0271. Moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislator Draw. Legislator Barra. Thank you. Um, through the chair of the administration, did the original referral include any funding for the uh, telephone interpreting services? Um, through the chair, you know, um, in the past we have used you know, item for miscellaneous professional services and we have done interpretation. I uh, um, have to confirm that, I guess, maybe before you can get a more definitive answer. But generally speaking, you know, we have used um, the miscellaneous professional services and in the past we have had the need to use interpreter services for this work. Thank you. So just to clarify, through the chair of the administration, um, you'll let me know whether or not the funding from the grant included any funds for interpreting services as well, correct? Through the chair, that is correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0272. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Carbone. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor. Legislator Haney. Uh, this is the item for which we received a substitution today. Is that correct? I'm through the chair, that is correct. Um, as I tried to compare the two, it appears that the only uh, difference is uh, that references to resolution 196 have been replaced by references to resolution 60. Is that correct? Through the chair, that is correct. There's a couple of, in the revised um, resolution, there's a couple of places where the reference is still made to 196. Um, in the first paragraph, in the third line, and in uh, legislative action three in the first line. Is, is, does this need further resolution? Uh, through the chair, no, it, it doesn't. It's intended to amend both resolution 60 of 2014 as well as 196. So we are, in fact, amending both resolutions? Through the chair, yes. Okay. The, uh, and through, through the chair, um, of, of late, our immunization rates, at least I believe our immunization rates, especially among children, have been dropping, not only locally but nationally. Is, 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 is that true locally? 
Um, through the chair, it depends upon the particular vaccine that you're talking about. Um, in general, you know, as one example, thinking about influenza vaccine, we know that, generally speaking, among school-aged children, about only 50% of the kids, you know, um, are appropriately vaccinated in any given year. Um, we have some newer vaccines, you know, like, you know, HPV, and it's a little bit harder to sort of provide, if you will, maybe trend data. Generally speaking, you know, um, our community has done better than both the state and the national averages, both among children and also among adults and seniors. And, you know, um, we can provide some more specific, you know, um, general trend data on certain vaccines, you know, that, if that's uh, through desired. The chair, that, that would be appreciated. I mean, this really poses a significant public health risk, doesn't it? I mean, the articles I've read where Unfortunately, large numbers of parents are refraining from having their children vaccinated. I mean, this has the potential for a significant health risk, doesn't it, with measles and that like? Through the chair, that is correct. And we have seen increases in that, you know, I guess maybe nationwide, you know, with um, certain, you know, parents, you know, choosing for various reasons not to have their children vaccinated. You know, and then as a result, um, their own children and other folks in their household may be put at risk, but certainly folks that they may come into contact with, whether that's at school, daycares, recreational centers, and the like. So, you know, that's correct. You know, that is a public health, I guess, maybe issue. And different states have different, you know, requirements and different laws, I guess, maybe that are in place in terms of how certain things are implemented regarding immunizations for children. In, through, the, through the chair, in, in this program, Will we be attempting to, um, I guess I'd say, correct that situation and educate parents and on the continuing need for vaccinations? Through the chair, that is correct. And then not only do we target, you know, folks in the community, including parents and households, but we also target the providers. You know, so in many cases, you know, in one particular practice, you know, that's medium to large size, which is the um, baseline target. They may have different, you know, levels of performance in terms of how well they're doing with regards to vaccinations. So for those that are not performing as well, those are generally um, practices that we will make visits to and provide education and also try to identify what some of those barriers are for reasons why they may not be achieving such levels of success that are um, demonstrated elsewhere in the county. Well, I wish them well because, I mean, the, the implications, there's been some startling statistics on the increase of measles and that like. Uh, I don't know if it's happened locally or not, but in some parts of the country, me <coughs> measles and whooping cough are making major comebacks and it's because kids aren't getting vaccinated. Um, through the chair, in some cases, you know, you have you know, individuals who are not getting vaccinated, but in other cases, like in the case of whooping cough, you may have children who may have been vaccinated, but because we're using a different formulation of the vaccine in more recent years, that vaccine appears to show, at least nationally, um, a weaning immunity. And so as a result of that, you know, that has brought around maybe the need to have increased boosters, um, not only for, um, you know, appropriate age, maybe children, but more importantly, even for adults as well as seniors who are around children, and just so they are less likely to um, pose a risk to children, in particular infants. In the case of measles, on the other hand, and some other um, vaccine-related illnesses, some of that reflects the fact that um, um, folks who have made certain decisions, or for that matter, folks who have traveled abroad, or folks who are coming to school over here um, who were not vaccinated in this country may not have originated from here. And from their countries of origin, there may be different standards in place. So a variety of reasons why we're seeing this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14-0273. Moved by Legislator Carbone, <laughs> seconded by legis Legislator Rocco. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barrage. Thank you. Uh, through the chair of the administration, just a one quick question. Um, the um, referral refers to 12,000, approximately $12,500 um, being, that will be used for quote, support facilities and administrative costs to run the program. Is this essentially overhead or is there some sort of concrete example of what these funds will be spent on? Um, 
through the chair, maybe this additional funding is used you know, to contribute to some of the already you know approved you know allocated items you know under the grant, which include you know salaries and benefits, and also the scope of services for which they are um, prescribed to perform. Thank you. And through the chair, the administration is essentially increasing the bottom line at the end of the day, correct? Through the chair, that's correct. Thank you. Any further discussion, Legislator Kaley? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the administration. Um, I had submitted a, a question that I would, would take uh, in writing with regards to the um, zip codes that were services that were serviced as well as the uh, number of homes. But I would like to um, add an additional request to that letter if I might. Uh, and that would be um, a, brief, a brief description of the, just lost my notes here, of the um, supportive data for this program, um, I'm not looking for a, a long report, but uh, in terms of evidence-based, um, if I could get something to that to that effect, I would appreciate it. Through the chair, with regards to your um, allusion to your earlier question that you had asked, you know the zip codes that we are addressing, like right now, I can provide those to you. That includes zip codes one four six zero five, one four six zero eight. 14609, 14611, and 14621. Um, three of those zip codes were previously, you know, um, targets, you know, with the last funding cycle that covered, you know, a four-year window period. With regards to the number of units that are addressed, approximately that's about 600, um, if you will, maybe um, uh, visits that are done initially, and then about another 150 revisits that typically occur about three to five months afterwards, and that's, if you will, on an um, annual basis. Thank you, then through the chair, if I could get um, the final data of the revisits, I would appreciate that. And I do have just one question on 14621. Uh, since 14621 uh, is not entirely um, city-based, are we reaching um, suburban-based homes as well? Through the chair. Um, through the chair, you know, um, we look at zip codes, but, you know, part of the problem with using zip codes is that their actual boundaries, you know, do not necessarily respect, if you will, um, municipal boundaries or, for that matter, county boundaries, because when they were originally designed, their purpose is really to deliver, um, if you will, maybe a mail to different addresses rather than to coincide, you know, exactly, you know, with boundaries. Um, so in many cases, not just in our community, but in other communities, not only throughout New York State, but nationally, you'll have some of those boundaries that overlap you know, in other areas, but as a geographic unit, um, that's convenient and one that we have accessible to us regarding our data. That's part of the reason why we use that and why it may not necessarily coincide. Uh, thank you, I, I'm not sure that I said it correctly. It's, it's not a criticism of using 14621. I, I think uh, through the chair, what I'm, what I'm trying to, to discern is whether or not some of the services actually do cross over those borders from city into suburban areas or not. It's not a, uh, it's just a question. Okay, uh, through the chair, um, we can confirm that for you. Um, certainly we have, I guess, maybe homes, maybe in the suburbs that are older where you actually have children, you know, mm -hmm. that are at risk, you know, um, and so to the extent that we have that you know, um, present, you know, that would also be, you know, part of our consideration too. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0274. Moved by Legislator Rocco, second by Legislator Tuccarello. Is there any discussion? Legislator Barat. Thank you. Uh, through the Chair of the Administration, I uh, noticed that the Schneider Laboratories Global Incorporation contract increased from $25,000 to $28,000, so increase of $3,000. Um, what are we going to be getting for this $3,000 increase, or what other additional services or, or range of services would they be providing as a result? Um, through the chair, you know, essentially, um, Snyder Laboratory is the same laboratory that we use for two different grants, you know, that serve two different programs. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the grants, you know, primarily targets, if you will, you know, children who have elevated blood levels above 15. And in that context, they're mandated by the state, you know, where they have to um, have, you know, um, case management that's both, you know, environmental as well. And so as part of that um, program, you know, you have to, you know, do, you know, sampling. Um, sampling at the sites, you know, which include the home, but also other locations where the child may spend a considerable amount of time, which could include daycare, could include the school, could include a relative. 
Um, so some of the laboratory testing maybe that occurs that actually maybe supports, if you will, maybe the work of that program. And then with the other um, program, that's primary prevention. And New York State has us allowed us to use you know, a value that's um, less than what their 15 um, micrograms per deciliter cutoff is um, to be applied towards this other grant and this other project. And currently right now in Monroe County, you know, um, the range we use is from eight um, up to 15. And then when it's above 15, then we use that other funding source. But in this case, it's the same laboratory conducting the same type of work, but for two different programs with two different sources of funding. So um, our guidance that we received was it would, uh, it would be best to sort of use not to have two separate you know, contracts for the same entity that's performing work on two different grants. Thank you. I think the chair mentioned just one last question. Um, under the specific legislative actions required, it mentions that you have to give $2,542 to the LED program county support program. Um, what is that? That's the second legislative action. Um, through the chair, you know, that basically allows, you know, alignment of this particular funding to be um, consistent, you know, with, you know, our budget. Through the chair administration, I'm not sure what that means. Mr. Chairman, it's not entirely uncommon that when additional funds come before this legislature for acceptance, that not the entire additional amount of those funds is required to amend the budget because uh, the budget already uh, has uh, a little bit of funding available so that it's uh, only a, a smaller dollar amount to actually amend the budget. Then just so I'm clear then, through the chair of the administration, um, are you telling me that um, of the $424,000 minus $28,000 minus $2,500, the rest of it's not being assigned anywhere? Mr. Chairman, although the legislative body is accepting the additional funding, the budget already includes partial funding for the required expenditures. And through the chair of the administration in anticipation of getting the grant? Would that be the case? Mr. Chairman, that could be one way to characterize it. Um, departments mm -hmm. often expect a change to their grant amount in the following year, and then when the change comes, it's not exactly in the amount they ex okay. expected. Thank you. That makes sense. Appreciate it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next item, please. Referral 14 0275. Moved by Legislator Tuturello, seconded by Legislator Quattrill. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, motion carries. Are there any other matters to come before this committee? Legislator Haney. Mr. Chairman, I'm wondering if Mr. Franklin could give us an idea as to when the second quarter key indicator report will be received. Mr. Chairman, uh, the committee will have that report prior to the end of this week. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, the committee will have that second quarter report by the end of this week. Okay, thank you very much. And when you transmit the report, if you could in your cover letter uh, give an indication of how much revenue you're anticipating to receive this year from the, I think they call it the Indian Gaming Settlement, uh, this new stream of money that's coming from the state as a result of their settlement with the Niagara and Oneida Indians. I'd appreciate it. Certainly, Mr. Chairman. Is there any other discussion? 
There being no further matters, the September 17th, 2014 meeting of the Ways and Means Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Ways and Means Committee is scheduled for Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014 at 6 p.m. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.